In this fourth video in my Tinkercad Circuits Lab series, we will focus on resistors in series and parallel. So if you are just joining us with this video, this is part of a playlist that is a companion series to my Intro Circuit Theory playlist that goes over the math of introductory circuits. And in Tinkercad here, we can drag around parts in a web browser, put them on a breadboard, so that makes this a great companion series if maybe you don't have access to a physical lab or you want to practice before going into a physical electronics lab so you don't have to worry about burning things up by accident. So again, if you are just searching for resistors and series in parallel and you want to see the math, go check out the other playlist linked in the description of this one. If you want to see how to physically connect them in series and parallel and measure their resistance, then you are in the right place. Let's start out with a single 100 ohm resistor. You can cheat in Tinkercad and just click on the resistor to edit the resistance value. In real life, you need to know how to read the color bands on the resistor, but that's a topic for a separate video. We're gonna skip that for now. And I can take my multimeter, and again, I have a separate video on my channel about how to use a real multimeter with a more complicated dial. This one is just very simple, has three buttons one for current, one for voltage, and one for resistance. So if I go ahead and hook this up to my resistor, hit start simulation, and click on the R for resistance, it's gonna tell me this is exactly 100 ohms. Now, real resistor ha resistors have a tolerance range on them, so you are rarely going to measure exactly 100 ohms on a real resistor, but in Tinkercad, everything is perfect. And as you should know, if you have watched the companion video about resistors in series, if I connect a second resistor in series with this one, pause the video and maybe ask yourself or quiz yourself if you remember what that is going to be. Okay, coming back after the pause, if I connect a second resistor in series with this one, the resistances are going to add. So I would, and if I'm being good about this, I would color code my multimeter wires to be more like a physical multimeter. If I connect two 100 ohm resistors in series, I would expect them to add to give me 200 ohms. So I go ahead and hit start simulation, and that is exactly what I get. Now that is pretty intuitive. You have more resistance that current has to flow through, so it's harder for current to flow, and resistance goes up. So if you go back and do the lab about Ohm's law before this one, you would see that for a fixed voltage or for a fixed voltage power supply or a battery, if the resistance goes up, then according to, Kerms, to Ohm's law, the current must go down if the voltage is constant. But again, go check out the Ohm's law video to learn more about that. Now, things are a little less intuitive if I connect the resistors in parallel. So I am going to delete my wires here. Now, I talk a little bit in some other videos about how electrically parallel is not the same thing as geometrically or physically in parallel. So many times, for convenience, we will sort of see resistors arranged both physically and electrically in parallel like this. But I can rotate this resistor 90 degrees. These are no longer geometrically in parallel. Geometrically, they are now perpendicular to each other, but the electrical connections have not changed. So electrically, these are still in parallel. Again, sometimes just to make drawings nice and neat and circuit diagrams and when building things on a breadboard, we also keep them physically in parallel like this. But again, it is very important to remember that those two things are not the same. So I'm going to go ahead and connect my multimeter leads in parallel here. And again, go ahead and maybe think about if you've watched the resistors in parallel video, pause the video and see what you would expect the answer to be. When I start the simulation and turn my multimeter on, if I am measuring two 100 ohm resistors in parallel. So hopefully you have paused and didn't cheat to just keep watching to see the answer. We see that I am now measuring 50 ohms. So the total equivalent resistance is cut in half. And you can think about this as the electricity having more paths to take. It kind of has more options. So it is easier for electricity to flow, electrical current. So the total resistance actually goes down. Again, that one is usually a little less intuitive because people just see more resistors and think, oh, there's more resistors, so the resistance must go up. But if I keep adding more resistors in parallel, for example, if I throw another 100 ohm resistor in there, and connect it in parallel, I'm giving 
more paths for electrical current to flow. So the equivalent total resistance is going to keep going down. And again, you can go watch the companion video about resistors in parallel to see the equation for calculating that equivalent resistance. Here we are showing you how to measure it. Now that is all great, but if you're in a situation where you need to build some equivalent resistor value out of individual resistors, you're probably not gonna solder the leads of the resistors together as represented by the wires in this video. You are probably gonna prototype it on a breadboard in an electronics lab, so it's important to know how to connect your resistors in series and parallel on the breadboard. And this is something where many times beginner students mess up. So if I ask you, we're gonna delete the third resistor here, if I ask a student to just put two resistors in series on a breadboard, many times the first thing they will do is this. Because again, we think, and when we hear the word series and parallel, we think physically or geometrically and not electrically. And we look at this and go, okay, those two resistors are in a line. And if I were to draw this in a circuit diagram, like I would see in a physics textbook, then that's how I would draw them in series. So they're in series but you have to understand how a breadboard works. And the nice thing about Tinkercad is that when you mouse over the holes, it shows these little green circles here for which other holes are electrically connected to it. And as you can see here, these separate rows are not connected. So each hole in row eight here, or at least the left side of row eight, these five holes, these are all connected to each other. And then over, so over on the other side of the breadboard, these holes in row eight are all connected to each other. They're not connected across the gap in the middle. So hole E8 is not connected to hole F8. But the adjacent rows are not connected. Row eight is not connected to row nine. So when I put these two resistors in here like this, they are not electrically connected to each other. They are not electrically in series. In order to put them in series, I need to connect them end to end. So I actually need to move one end of this resistor up here to row eight. And now they're not perfectly lined up geometrically, so it might not look like they're physically in series anymore, but electrically they are in series. If you really wanna have them physically lined up like this too, then you would also have the option of using a jumper wire to connect row eight to row nine. So that uses an extra part, but now you keep your resistors nice and lined up and they are both geometrically and electrically in series. But Again, it is critically important to remember that the separate rows of the breadboard are not connected. So many times you may build the circuit. We're not putting in any external components here like batteries or LEDs. I have other videos about those, but for example, in a circuit with a battery and an LED, students will build it and go, why isn't my LED lighting up? And it's because you have an open circuit because your resistors aren't connected. Also remember that as I demonstrated earlier, while our instinct is to put them geometrically in series like this, they don't have to be. So I could turn one 90 degrees and now they are physically perpendicular to each other, but still electrically in series here because these two terminals are connected in row eight. So I can again get my multimeter out and connect it to the two terminals at the ends of this branch or this section of the circuit with two resistors in series. And when I run the simulation and turn it on, I should get the same reading I did before when I just wired these directly without the breadboard of 200 ohms. So I am now going to demonstrate doing this in parallel. Same concept we saw before, we need to know how a breadboard works. So in this case, things work out a little more nicely because of how the rows are connected. So here, they are both electrically and physically in parallel. And since row four is connected to the other holes in row four here, and row eight has these five holes connected, and the resistors are the same size, then the two terminals on each end wind up being connected, and they are in parallel. So again, I can connect my multimeter wires the same way I did before, and I should get the same reading I did before of 50 ohms. But again, you have a lot of freedom in how you lay things out on the breadboard here, so I don't have to do it like that. If I did want to rotate one of these like that, then I could use a jumper wire. So the terminals on this end are already connected in this row, but right now they're in series. In order for them to be in parallel, I need to connect both ends. So I could route a jumper wire from here to here. 
and now they are electrically in parallel again because both pairs of terminals are connected. So if I connect my multimeter to the two ends, I should now get, if you remember from earlier in the video, 50 ohms instead of 200 ohms. So that was a demonstration of how to connect resistors in series and parallel on a breadboard and measure their equivalent resistance. If you were given this as a problem in a physical lab, you aren't going to be able to just click on a resistor and select any value you want. So for example, in Tinkercad, if I wanted a 250 ohm resistor, I can just click on this one and set it to 250 ohms. Whoops. But for example, if you have a resistor kit that only has 100 ohm resistors in it, and you're challenged to build a 250 ohm resistor, then you would have to figure out how to do that using only 100 ohm resistors, sometimes in a more complicated configuration of a combination of series and parallel. So you just need some certain resistor value for the circuit you're building. Again, a current limiting resistor for an LED is a common example, but resistor kits only come with certain values available. And again, you can go check out the companion series to see the math behind that and the equations for calculating equivalent resistance in series and parallel. I do plan to continue this series with more videos covering resistors and eventually components like capacitors and inductors. So stay tuned, subscribe, or just check out the playlist on my channel to see the next video in this series. Thank you.